Multiple Gospels, it's a teaching of man. It is not a revelation of God. And, and um, so Paul made it very clear. You know, it is not another. But there are some that would pervert the Gospel. It is not another because there is no other. There's no other Gospel. So it can't be another Gospel because there is no other Gospel. And to, you know, to please man... You've got to preach the multiple Gospels. It's the same today. But Paul said, if I please man, I'm not pleasing God. And so, yeah, you're not going to be, you know, I'm not going to get more popular preaching this kind of thing, but I don't, that, that's fine. So while there are many names for the Gospel, it's clear they're all the same thing. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, this is the first time, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the earlier times where we see the Gospel mentioned. But I'm, I'm going to go to a lot of passages here. If you want to try to follow, go ahead. But in Matthew 4.23, it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Then Mark 1.14, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe ye the gospel. Mark 16, 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and pre preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Whenever you see the gospel being preached, it's talking about repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to turn from your unbelief, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel. Okay? And we see that Jesus, John, preached the gospel of repentance. We see and after Jesus died and rose from the dead, he sent them to all the world to preach the gospel, to preach repentance. We see Peter preaching that in Acts and Pentecost. Um, Acts 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Okay? Just like it was taught in the gospels. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The same thing Jesus taught the Jews, Peter is now saying we've got to teach that to the Gentiles. The Gospel. So they will hear the Gospel and believe. Acts 20, verse 20. Paul says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide in me. But none of these things move me, neither count on my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye, will, that ye all, among whom I have gone preach, preaching, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Paul is preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What's that about if it's all, just for the Jews? Well, it's because it wasn't just for the Jews. It's the same gospel. Multiple times... Uh, you know, there, here's some example of multiple titles for the gospel, but they're clearly all one. Romans one, uh, we don't have time to read through all this. I, I really wish we did. But Romans one, uh, one through seventeen, it mentions the gospel of God and the gospel of His Son. Okay, Go gospel of God. Well, that's for the Jews. Gospel of the Son. That's for us. No, it's the same gospel. It's very clear. Read Romans one, one through seventeen. Romans one sixteen mentions that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Same, same gospel. Romans 15, verse 15, it mentions the gospel of God and Christ. They're mentioned there together. In Romans 2, 16 and 16, 25, Paul uses the term, my gospel. Well, did Paul have a gospel too? Yeah, it was the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he was sharing. It was the same thing. It wasn't a different gospel. That's just, hey, this is what I'm teaching you. He claimed it for himself. And since Paul mentions so many different gospels, Paul mentions the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of peace. Paul mentions all those things. And when he's just talking about my gospel, well, how are we supposed to know which one that was? Because he's talking about all those different gospels. Well, we were supposed to know because it was all the same gospel. Just obvious. 
Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 10.13-21 mentions the gospel of peace that was rejected by the Jews and accepted by the Gentiles. It mentions that the gospel that the Jews rejected was the gospel the Gentiles received. Well, if Jesus and John the Baptist were preaching another gospel and then what Paul preached then how were they able to receive that gospel? Because it was the same gospel. If the gospel... And so um, Isaiah 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace and bringeth good tidings of good, and that publisheth salvation, that saying to Zion, Thy God reigneth. Paul in um, Romans chapter 10 quotes Isaiah where it talks about good tidings which in the New Testament, it translates that into gospel. Good tidings and gospel are the same thing. Jesus, when he preached uh, liberty to the captives, and he mentions preaching the gospel, he was reading from Isaiah. Isaiah says good tidings. Jesus said gospel. Same thing. The gospel that was talked about in the Old Testament was the gospel that Jesus preached to the Jews. And the gospel that was mentioned in the Old Testament was the gospel that Paul preached to the Gentiles. It was all the same gospel. And so, uh, you know, Acts uh, 10.34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. That word I say ye know that was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And jump down to verse 43. It says to give him or to him give all the prophets witness that through his name Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. The prophets even witnessed what Jesus did, what Jesus preached. It wasn't wasn't revealed to them until that time came, but it's showing the consistency throughout the Bible. Down at verse, and then in verse 47, it says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? This is in Acts chapter 10 when they're realizing the gospel is going to the Gentiles. Just like them. They weren't ready for that. They did not understand that. But God revealed it to them. They're like, why would we treat the Gentiles any different than we're treating us? God's not treating them any different. God is no respecter of person. Turns out God does the same thing in every nation. And so, let's baptize these folks that are Gentiles. That was before James was written. So yeah, James did. Yeah, he wrote to the 12 tribes. But after that, you don't see it that way anymore because it was, it was to Jews and Gentiles alike. It was always the same gospel, but it was spoken in a mystery. And throughout time, God revealed more and more the truth of the gospel. Romans 16, 25. I've got a bunch of bonus verses. I'm not going to go into them. It says, Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. How can you keep something a secret if it's not there? How can you keep? How could God have kept a secret if, he, if it was a new plan that He came up with after the Gentile or after the Jews rejected Him? It was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the Scriptures of the prophets, Old Testament, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Don't let people tell you that this stuff is not for you. That you can learn from the Old Testament. There are things in there that are for you. That God, it, it has all God's plan has been the same from the beginning of time. But over the dispensations, He revealed He revealed more and more. What what you know what uh, qualifies as a dispensation? Well, when they would learn new things about God's plan. You could say that that was another dispensation. God dispensed a little more of His plan to people. God dispensed some to Abraham. God dispensed a little more maybe to David or to Moses and then David. And God dispensed a lot more when Jesus Christ came. And then even after Jesus died, 
he dispensed even more to guys like Peter and Paul. And we now have the completed Word of God that teaches one consistent gospel.